Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Montgomery County Council sitting as the Board of Health. Today, we're holding a special meeting for the introduction, public hearing and action on a resolution to adopt a Board of Health regulation to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in the county. I'll just say everything we've done since the beginning of this pandemic a year ago has been on the advice of our top medical officers and our emergency management team. All of us on the council fully recognize the importance of sports and the benefits of these activities on the physical and emotional well-being of our youth, especially during a time that's been so socially isolating for so many of our children. And I agree with the parents and students who've expressed the need for equitable access for participation in sports. Like many of my colleagues, I'm the parents of, of two young MCPS students, so uh, we feel this firsthand, but I can tell you we all understand the importance of this issue and we did so long before this pandemic. I believe the regulation proposed by the amendment today will provide a strong path forward to our youth sports while ensuring the utmost safety precautions are in place for teams and organizations. But we'll continue to be guided by the medical data, we'll measure uh, and reassess our progress every two weeks, and we'll continue taking a balanced approach in these decisions to ensure the safety of our young students, athletes, coaches, and families. So first, let me recognize the council senior legislative attorney, Bob Drummer, to explain the resolution to the public and, um, and take questions. And then I'll call on uh, our emergency management director, Earl Stoddard, to elaborate. Bob. Thank you. Uh, this is a continuation really of what happened last Friday with the council sitting as the Board of Health, approving a Board of Health regulation that was designed to limit the spread of COVID-19 in the county. Uh, this is a limited amendment at the moment. It would deal exclusive, the substance deals exclusively with sports <clears throat> and uh, specifically would create a requirement for an organized sports league, including MCPS, to, uh, to provide and have approved a COVID protocol plan, which would be approved by the health officer, or the health officer's designee before they start the sports. The plan would, would require uh, contact tracing with attendance tracking sheets, uh, face coverings worn per guidelines from the American Academy of Pediatrics, social distancing, at least six feet to the extent possible, and requiring the use of a, either a student attestation form or some type of COVID-19 athlete coach monitoring form for all activities. Uh, it does include an exception because, as you know, some sports have already been approved under existing regulations and are currently operating. And this has a, uh, an exception for any organized sports league, a youth sports league that's already been approved to operate under a prior Board of Health regulation and was not classified as a high risk sport. Uh, would need uh, would not need to have a new COVID protocol plan as long as they continue to follow the guidelines of the approval they already had. Uh, if they want to expand or do something different, then they would need to follow the COVID protocol plan or request a waiver. Uh, and finally, for sports that are not played in an organized league, as we all know, many sports are played that way. Uh, they would be required to follow the existing social gathering guidelines, the 50 people maximum for outdoor sports, 25 for indoor sports. And if they wanna go beyond that, uh, oh, also I should mention, and they must also uh, use a face covering whenever social distancing is not possible. And if they would like to have more than 50 people outdoors or more than 25 indoors, they could request a letter of approval. Uh, as as they currently could. Uh, and that's the, uh, that's the regulation, uh, the amendments to the regulation. Everything else would be the same as it was last Friday. Thank you so much, Mr. Drummer. Um, let me call on Dr. Stoddard, the Director of our Office of Emergency Management and Homeland Security. Dr. Stoddard. Um, as Mr. Drummer alluded to, our, our letter of approval team reviews uh, plans for sports 
uh, when necessary. And in our view, uh, and as alluded to by the regulation, we would not require a resubmission of plans that have previously been approved unless there is a change in the way that the the the, the uh, presenter of the plan uh, intends to operate. And so there are many existing sports for which there have already been plans approved and we would not need to see those again. If there is a change made in a plan only to comply with the new face covering requirements that the American Association of Pediatrics has released and the Board of Health Regulation has instituted, we would not need to see that again, so long as it's just to comply with that order. Uh, really, the focus area would be is if there's a substantial change, which would include uh, those sports that are now moving to competition or um, sort of any tournament kind of thing would have to come in through a letter of approval process. Um, if they haven't previously been permitted to have competitions, which was which are those sports that would be would have been classified as high risk prior to uh, the most recent definitions changing. So um, obviously, our intention is we we, we meet to, the team meets on Tuesdays to review plans and speaks with Dr. Gales and myself on Wednesday mornings. And so that's our normal routine for how these letter, letters of approval are reviewed and processed. And so people who submit plans will have those plans reviewed in a timely fashion. We do not have a backlog at this point. So everything that's submitted before Tuesday gets reviewed on Tuesday and, and on Wednesday and, and approvals or clarifications go out thereafter. Um, and so obviously that would be the expected timeline. We have all obviously already been working with Montgomery County Public Schools. And so all of the plans that they have in place for the fall, I believe are ready to move forward as they have presented them once the Board of Health acts. And so they would not need an additional, there would be no additional uh, review period that would be necessary for those plans as we have already conducted them in advance of this hearing. So that's all I have to add and happy to answer any questions if there are any. Terrific. Um, that's very helpful, Dr. Stoddard and Mr. Drummer. Appreciate both of your contribution to this. Um, it is now 1.15 and we can begin our hearing with the council again sitting as the Board of Health. The introduction uh, we have is the resolution to adopt a first amendment amended Board of Health regulation to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in Montgomery County. The lead sponsors are council members Rice and Reamer. Each individual in the public hearing will have two minutes to speak. Individuals will be alerted as they approach their two minutes and may be disconnected. And there may be technical glitches, as you saw during the public hearing, that maybe need to be addressed by our staff. So thanks in advance for your patience. Ms. Kennedy, could you uh, please introduce the speakers for the public hearing? I sure can. The first speaker today is Matthew Libber. Mr. Libber, you have two minutes. You may begin when you're ready. Uh, President Hucker, members of the council, thank you again for having me. Uh, again, Matt Libber, Executive Director of Maryland Soccerplex. Um, again, returning to discuss the face mask uh, mandate. Uh, as I've testified multiple times in front of you, we are the outlier on this issue. We are the only county in the region, in the state, anywhere that I can find that's anywhere reasonably close that has this mask mandate. It's putting us on an unlevel playing field with those around us. Um, we actually submitted a waiver for uh, a request for the face, ma face mask mandate to be removed. Uh, in the denial, part of the reasoning was given they want to do a trial to make sure the loosening restrictions uh, get us to a better place. My counter to that is we've already done that. Our whole entire fall season was a proof of concept. We played without masks. We played with the same capacities that we're asking for now. We did it successfully and want to point out we did it with double the COVID metrics that we're currently looking at. Um, we've already proven we can do this. There are consequences to this already. We've already lost events that have pulled out. Um, I did a quick tally from April through August. The consequences of us not moving this mandate are about $17 million of economic impact to this county. Um, not, that's not even including the clubs that are involved and things like that. So we need to move this and we need to move it now. Um, you know, I, just for the first opening weekend, which is coming up for the soccer season, 2019, which is our last equivalent season, we had 341 games scheduled at the Soccerplex. For this coming year, we're less than half of that because teams have already moved their games out of the county and they're playing somewhere else. We're not actually keeping anyone safer with this face, face mask mandate. We're just making them play somewhere else. Uh, we're sending them to other states and other counties where they have less restrictions around uh, restaurants and retail and things like that. So we're actually putting them in a more dangerous situation than letting them play here without masks on the field under our more strict restrictions. So again, I plead with you to change this policy. Let us do what we did safely in the fall and prove to you that we can do this again in the spring. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker is Will Gardner. Mr. Gardner, you have two minutes and you may begin whenever you're ready. Hello, uh, again, I'm Will Gardner. I am the quarterback at Walter Johnson High School 
and uh, I'm currently a junior. Uh, first off, I wanted to say thank you to the county council members uh, for reconsidering your decision uh, previously on football games and uh, bringing that back to the floor. Uh, today, I wanted to talk a little bit about what football means to me and to other student athletes in the county. Football has been more than a game to me in my life, and football has taught us numerous life lessons about leadership, hard work, and dedication that I, I apply to my everyday life. Returning to football in the spring was uh, definitely a shining light for me. In uh, such a dark past year, football gave uh, many of us a sense of normalcy in our life when almost everything had been far from normal. Um, the return of football has given us motivation to try hard not only for the game that we love, but also in the classroom. Many student athletes, including myself, are also chasing college scholarships uh, to become student athletes again at the next level. Uh, the shortened season means everything to us and can change our lives forever. And most states in the nation play football and students in these areas are way on their way in recruiting process. Uh, without the game film this year, uh, MoCo student athletes will remain way behind the bar um, compared to their peers in the recruiting process. And then also in terms of the spread of coronavirus, uh, collectively as a team, WJ has followed all safety protocols Montgomery County has put in place and has adhered to them strictly because being allowed to play matters so much to us. We hope that in doing so that being allowed to play football games and we hope that the county, uh, county council members will now allow us to play football games with their decision today. Uh, since the start of the pandemic, I personally have not been in anyone else's house or driven in cars with other people just because I know how serious this virus is. I take it very seriously as well. Um, and me and my teammates will continue to strictly follow all safety guidelines when allowed to play games because it means so much more than a game to us. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker will be Greg Smith. Mr. Smith, you have two minutes. You may begin your testimony when you're ready. President Hucker and fellow council members, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. My name is Greg Smith and I serve as executive director for the Maryland State Youth Soccer Association. We are the highest administrative authority for the Amateur Youth Board of Soccer within Maryland and DC as recognized by the national governing body for the sport, which is the United States Soccer Federation. We are fortunate to serve many outstanding soccer clubs and leagues within Montgomery County who collectively provide soccer programs and services to more than 25,000 players, in addition to thousands of coaches, referees, and administrators every year. When you include their parents and guardians, siblings, and loved ones, this represents more than 10% of all Montgomery County residents, your constituents. I'm here to speak against the requiring of face coverings while actively engaged in high intensity activities as this directly affects youth soccer in Montgomery County. Montgomery County is the only jurisdiction within Maryland with this restriction. The wearing of masks can make it difficult for players on the field to perform while attempting to breathe. Nearly all organizations to include the Centers for Disease Control have an exception for removing the mask during vigorous exercise while outdoors. This includes running, which is a central element in the playing of soccer. I can testify that the Maryland State Youth Soccer Association has successfully held safe soccer training sessions and competitions with thousands of players collectively within Maryland over the past few months in compliance with the various restrictions that have been in place, none of which required the wearing of masks while actively playing soccer. And I can report that we have not had a single case of COVID transmission. I ask that you please remove the mask mandate while playing soccer outdoors. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next next speaker is Kelly Icecant. Ms. Icecant, you have two minutes. You may begin when you're ready. Hi, my name is Kelly Icecant. I'm a resident of 20906, the hardest hit zip code in the state of Maryland. Many of my neighbors never had the luxury of staying home. Some were exposed or contracted COVID-19. One year later, as metrics improve and we take baby steps toward normalcy, we should do so not only mindful of our own fears, but through the lens of what's right by our kids. High school student athletes have now started to practice the sports they love. These kids don't just exist within a bubble of what county council or the school system can do to keep them safe. When guidelines are followed, the spread is manageable. My 16-year-old son and his Kennedy High School teammates have spent time over the past year training together outdoors in anticipation of a season. Not a single positive case occurred among them here in the epicenter of the state. No one had to remind them to wear masks or stay apart. No check-ins or chaperones were needed. They've watched firsthand as the pandemic changed the world. They understand the gravity. Words like robust, pivot, and reimagine <clears throat> mean little to them. 
The American Academy of Pediatrics states that most cases in youth sports originate outside of practices and games, and the CDC is now reporting that three feet is adequate distance. Sports like football, palms, and cheerleading should not be prevented from competition, especially as county restaurants increase indoor seating and youth hockey games begin. Similar areas like Fairfax and Howard counties have started high school sports and cautiously allow spectators. Montgomery County, a local leader, has hedged on decisions as athletes diligently train. Our answer to spectators is a live video streaming paid subscription. As you make your decisions, please consider the precedent set for future generations. I encourage the safe opening of all sports with fans to safely support them. We recognize by now that COVID-19 may evolve, but it's here to stay, and we have to learn to live with it. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker is Patricio Lara Navarrete. Ms. Navarrete, you have two minutes. Thank you. Begin, or um, Mr. Navarrete, pardon me. You have two minutes. You may begin when you're ready. Thank you very much for having me. Um, so my name is Patricio Lara Navarrete. Uh, I'm a football player from BCC High School. And about two years ago, my family made a huge sacrifice uh, for my brother and I to be able to come to the U.S. to play football and have an education here. Back then, I didn't know a soul, and the BCC football team became my family during the summer practices before I started my junior year. Sadly, during that first scrimmage, I tore my ACL, and I wasn't able to play the rest of the season. But I was there at every practice and at every game to support my teammates and help them, because even though I was injured, I had made a commitment to them. We lost the full season, and the virtual season just wasn't football, football at all, and it just didn't compare to the real thing. I try to look on the bright side and focused on what I can control, improving myself every single day. I know what, that's what most of us did. When coach told me there was a good possibility that we might play, I got extremely excited. We started practicing, we got pads, helmets, and then all of a sudden, the county was pulling the plug on us. The roller coasters of emotions was crushing. COVID had been tough and it had been really challenging to remain positive. I love being back on the field and that's why I look forward to each day. Since coming to BCC two years ago, I haven't had the opportunity to suit up with my team. I want this three game season so I can have that opportunity. And not just with my football family, but with my brother, Octavio, who is a junior at BCC. Someone I've seen grow and idolize as a person and as a football player. I know this is our only chance to get to play together on the same team and, I will, and that opportunity would mean the world to me. At BCC, we wear face masks. We don't use a locker room. We carry our gear back and forth each day, and we avoid huddles. We have followed county guidelines, and we'll continue to do so to stay safe and keep everyone, everybody safe among, uh, around us. I hope you will consider lifting the ban on contact and games to allow me and our team one last experience together, and I know we'll remember for the rest of, of our lives. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your testimony, Mr. Navarrete. Our next speaker is Lori Lane. Ms. Lane, you have two minutes. You may begin as soon as you're ready. Hi, good afternoon, Council President Hucker and fellow council members. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you again today. Day. My name is Laurie Lane. I am the Executive Director of Potomac Soccer Association. I'm here to ask you to please reconsider the requirement of face coverings while players are participating in high activ intensity activities such as soccer games. Our players have readily adhered to this mandate, but as the spring leagues start and the warmer weather returns, this requirement will severely restrict our players' ability to effectively compete. Furthermore, it is a burdensome requirement to those in our surrounding counties and states that have been effectively competing in sports at all levels and activities for months. They refuse to come to Montgomery to participate, when then leaves play, which leaves players no choice but to travel outside the county to seek competition. This is literally driving business away. County residents now believe you just don't care. For the, four, for the past 41 years, if not for COVID last year, it would have been 42, we have hosted upwards of 450 teams at our Memorial Day tournament, with the Maryland Soccerplex being our main venue. And the before times, we consistently have sold over 5,000 thousand hotel room nights with the majority of our teams traveling in from the Northeast. It is imperative that you also understand that limiting participation to only the DMV must also be lifted. This tournament is the single biggest revenue stream that completely underwrites all of our operations and especially supports our financial aid fund. While we can fully appreciate the desire to have a slow rolling reduction 
reduction and restrictions, we unfortunately cannot wait for this to play out. Teams are making their decisions about where to play now. If they do not have the assurance that these restrictions will be lifted by then, they will simply choose another tournament where masks are not required. We cannot wait till May to find out if we will be allowed to be on a level playing field with everyone around us. If we are not allowed, allowed to host this tournament with amended restrictions, this may effectively bankrupt our small nonprofit. I'm pleading with you today to please remove these restrictions so that not only the business of youth soccer can survive this, but also the businesses in Montgomery County that benefit to, from those that attend the tournament can have a fighting chance to economically survive this pandemic as well as physically. Thank you so very much and please help us. Thank you again. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker is Dan Giffen. Mr. Giffen, you have two minutes, you may begin. Thank you. Um, I want to uh, take a moment to thank everyone that's taking the time to speak today. Let me start my video. Um, there we go. Um, I uh, just wanted to share, I have a unique perspective. Not only do I have a role with uh, OBGC Travel Soccer as a tournament coordinator, administrator, coach, manager, I've been involved in the game essentially for over uh, 50 years. Um, I want to give you a, a snapshot of what it's like for a parent and someone with all those roles, starting with the organization I work with, OBGC. OBGC hosts a lot of different sports. So I get a lot of perspective from the different sports and the requirements they have. OBGC has lost over $400,000 this past year just due to closures and the, the number of registrations that have dropped uh, for this spring is still down 25%. It's probably going to go potentially even lower as we have uh, parents because of this mask mandate for this particular sport, soccer, uh, with medical issues or concerns about their kids just being able to enjoy it. Uh, the, the other thing too is with uh, the guidelines, which thankfully we were able to have some aid on that, we're probably still gonna lose another $150,000 this year. I'm gonna give you an example. We have a tournament that's one of the largest in this region uh, on Labor Day weekend, uh, we had to move our entire tournament, uh, the OBGC Capital Cup, to Howard County last year. We were still down a number of teams, but I'm concerned about this fall. Hopefully, we will have this resolved before then. Um, just to give you an idea as well, um, mask usage for the, the kids is such a deterrent for families to participate. Um, I can say that all of the different youth clubs in this greater Montgomery County area, all of them have unified to make sure that everybody wears masks at all times. As soon as they step out of the parking lot for a training session, a match, you name it. The one thing that when I speak to other clubs throughout the state in the district and in Virginia, they all indicate the same thing. We can play and do these matches without a mask. Pardon me, no Mr. One, Giffen, yes. I'm so sorry to interrupt. Your two minutes is up, but thank, thank you, you for your testimony. Mm -hmm. Our next speaker is Ricardo Villars. Mr. Villars, you have two minutes. You may begin when you're ready. Hello, my name is Ricardo Villars Jr. I'm 16 years old and I'm a junior student athlete at Montgomery Blair High School. <clears throat> First, I'd like to say thank you and I appreciate the opportunity to be able to address the council and other prominent county officials directly on an issue that means a lot to so many of us student athletes. Some background on myself is that I've been playing football since I was six years old in the first grade. I've always dreamed of playing at the next level and even possible the NFL if it was possible. This sport definitely means the world to me and a lot of other student athletes. So when the county announced that we would play in the spring after a reasonable cancellation of the fall, I was extremely happy to return to the field, but also to see my teammates who are like second family to me. A lot of us student athletes need this season because we don't just see football as a sport that we enjoy, but as a sport that we can use to help advance our education, attend a four-year school, and not have our parents pay for us to go to college, but also to escape issues we deal with outside the field. Because when we're on that field, we're surrounded by brothers and family that always look out for us and care for us. We've all been taking the pandemic seriously, and coaches have been following your guidelines, and school faculty have been enforcing us to wear masks and social distance when we're not actively in drills, and we're not using locker rooms, we're not sharing equipment, and we're masked up at all times, working side by side with other contact sports, such as field hockey and soccer. So I believe if you give us the chance, we can play the sport we all love, but most importantly, play it safe. Thank you for your testimony. 
Our next speaker is Dante Thompson. Mr. Thompson, you have two minutes for your testimony. You may begin when you're ready. You're muted. Sorry. There you go, thank you. My name is Dante Thompson. I'm a senior at Quinn's Georgia High School. I'm speaking today to you about the thousand athletes from Montgomery County. Over the past year, we spent our time waiting for us to get our chance back to play the sport we love, a sport that provides meaningful connections, a positive mentoring, a sport that you, that does and can change lives for the better, a sport that has offered me a path to attend a four-year college and further my education. I am here to advocate for others to be afforded the same opportunity that I had. The reality is that without playing time game field, this will not happen for seniors. This is their last chance to earn a football scholarship, a goal that they worked for many, many years. Student athletes who participate in other sports have been able to continue playing throughout the pandemic by joining clubs and travel teams. Right here in Montgomery County, unfortunately, MCPS football players have no similar activities. This is shortened spring season is the only chance we have. It may seem to you that we are missing out on three games is not a much, but the truth is being able to play these three games could represent so much more. These three games can help our social and emotional well-being, giving us a sense of purpose. These three games give us motivate, motivation and comply with the recommended health and safety guidelines. For so many of us, these three games can represent a realization of a lifelong goal and an opportunity for a better future. Thank you for the time for listening to me and my testimony and considering what this season really means to so many student athletes from Montgomery County. Thank you for your testimony. Mr. President, that wraps up the speakers for this public hearing. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Kennedy. Thank you to all our speakers. This public hearing is now closed and we can move on to action. Is there a motion to enact the resolution? Uh, Mr. President. Councilman. Yes, I thank you very much. So, um, I, I, you're, you're moving, and is there a second? Yes, second. I, I, I move. Reamer? Thank you. Okay. Moved and seconded. The, mo the motion is on the table. It's been moved and seconded. Councilmember Rice. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Sorry about that. Um, so let me first say I really want to thank, uh, especially our student speakers, uh, to hear from them, and they really did an impressive job. Uh, and the thing that struck me most, I must say, was the acknowledgement of the need to balance safety as well as their uh, need to be able to be on the playing field. Uh, and I think that that is what embodies what uh, this amendment is all about. Uh, it really is about making sure that folks understand that we do hear you in that we need to provide equitable access to be able to play sports, but we also wanna make sure that we can mitigate as much of the risk as possible. I really wanna thank uh, Dr. Travis Gales, Dr. Earl Stoddard, who's on the call, and all of the coaches, uh, parents, and students who have all come together to help us to create something that I believe uh, will continue to provide equitable access to sports while keeping our children safe. As the father of a young woman who graduated from Northwest High School, who participated in not only cheerleading, but competition cheer, uh, I know how important it is. And as the father of a young girl who's a soccer player and budding uh, volleyball player, I know how important sports are. They do matter tremendously when it comes to achieving a balance. Uh, physical well-being is incredibly important to mental health. Uh, there is no question about it. And so from that perspective, I really wanna thank each and every one of my colleagues, lastly, uh, for all that they have done to continue to work with us in partnership to make this happen. This truly has been a collaborative effort, Mr. President, uh, and really something that I think is going to move the ball forward. Thank you, Council Member Jawando. I'm sorry, Council Member Reamer. Thank you, thank you, Council President. Uh, this has been an emotional roller coaster. Uh, thank you, Council Member Rice, for introducing this, and I'm I'm really pleased to second it. Uh, everyone has had a hand in this. I, I had a powerful conversation with Council Member Katz. Uh, we were talking about what it means to a student who has spent their life working toward this season and you know, needs a chance to, to perform. Um, I've had powerful conversations with almost every council member <laughs> about this, but I wanna salute the students who came, they rallied, they came to the county council and they raised their voice 
and you got our attention to something I think that really had just been an oversight, but you made sure that we didn't miss it. And uh, your council has responded. It, one of the things I love about serving on the county council is the opportunity to serve deeply uh, different communities. And here we have our youth athletics community that needs us. And I, I'm really grateful to my colleagues for coming through. I wanted to just echo comments that Councilmember Albert Nos made last week. Um, Howard County, as we know, their football program lost six games because of transmission. Our season here is only three games. Our football season is only three games. Our athletes know this. We heard testimony from Mr. Warner uh, about his you know, diligence to best practices. But for our athletes, you know, this, this is gonna count. This is gonna count. So please use your leadership, be an example, follow all your best practices and protocols, be an example for your peers so that the schools can continue to be open. And, you know, let's all win this one together. Uh, last thing I'll say, our facial covering guidelines, the language in there, refers specifically to guidance of the American Academy of Pediatrics. So that is following the doctor's orders. And if those doctor's orders change, then our order changes uh, automatically. But, um, you know, we are, we are following our doctor's orders here. So thank you very much. Appreciate everyone's hard work on this and support. And it's going to be a big win for our students who, who need a big win. Thank you. Council Member Jawando. Thank you, Mr. President, and, and I want to thank my colleagues uh, as well, all of my colleagues, and, and obviously Council Member Rice and, and, and Reamer for putting forward uh, this, but I think it really is on behalf of all of us. We all think this is uh, extremely important. Uh, you know, I, I was, uh, Council Member Alvarez and I were remarking uh, today and, and other days uh, that just how proud we are of our young people. Um, that have come forward. Um, and, uh, you know, I've, I've said before, I was a high school athlete. I played football and basketball, and I went to college on a basketball scholarship in part. Um, and I know how that kept me on the straight and narrow. Uh, there's some days I only went to school because I knew I had practice, and I'll be honest about that. And I know that I'm not, and, and that doesn't even have to be just for sports. There are things that animate and motivate uh, and are part of your social, emotional health, well-being, and development. And sports is certainly one of those things, but the arts, there's a whole list. And uh, I'm glad we're taking this action in a safe way. Um, you heard there's still divergence in the testimony about should facial covering be, be required or not. Um, we maintain that. Uh, huddles, you heard the, what the young man said about how they're proceeding. MCPS, is, I want to thank them. They put a very thoughtful plan together in, co in combination uh, in collaboration rather with our health department and our emergency management department. And these are tough trade-offs. Um, you know, as I think Council President mentioned, uh, you know, he and I and, and, and others will soon be doing it, put our kids, took them to school or put them on the bus this week for the first time in a calendar year. It's just hard to, you know, overstate the impact that that has had on so many students and, and not being able to play sports is another uh, another impact. So I'm glad we're taking the step. It's not without risk. Uh, you know, that we, we are watching the numbers, we're watching the variants, uh, but I think this will is a very positive step forward and I'm happy to see uh, that these three games will be able to go forward. And just please keep maintaining the social distancing, keep under the guidelines, we need to do all we can. Um, so I'm really happy to work with my colleagues on this and glad we're Glad we're correcting this and, and making sure that you all can move forward. So thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Council Vice President Albert Nose. Thanks. I really appreciate everyone's work on this. Um, this is an example of how uh, we, we are doing our best to be nimble and evolve as information becomes available. And I'm very proud of my colleagues who all work collaboratively over this last week uh, to arrive at a place that I think is very reasonable. Uh, as Councilmember Jawander just said, the, hearing that youth testimony really moved me on a lot of different levels because that probably would have been me 25 years ago. Um, and as I've said many times before the dais, sports played in a remarkably important role in my development in so many different ways. Uh, and to my 
friends and brothers and sisters in the soccer community. Uh, I've had conversations with, with many of you over this last year. Uh, I understand where you are coming from in the advocacy for masks, and I understand the frustration with the disparities in how other jurisdictions are handling this. But I think it is appropriate for us to follow the guidance of the uh, uh, Academy, um, American Academy of Pediatrics, because it is a trusted organization, a trusted national organization, a trusted neutral organization. Uh, and we're fortunate that our public health officer happens to be a pediatrician. Uh, and so it is very relevant to receive guidance uh, beyond what we are capable of analysis, analyzing and studying just ourselves here within Montgomery County. But as Councilmember Reamer said, uh, as that policy adjusts uh, in organizations like that, we will adjust with it, which is why soccer was permitted to carry out in the fall, because at the time, uh, the, Academy, uh, the American Academy for Pediatrics felt that during rigorous sports, the, the, the cons outweighed the pros in terms of using masks during rigorous exercise, but they shifted their policy as more information became available. And it can't be underscored enough the tenuous situation we are in right now with this virus. We just opened up schools this week, just this week. Uh, and it is a moral imperative for us to do everything we can to keep them open. Uh, and to make it safe for everyone. And the fact that we can continue to play even with masks. And my son played soccer in the fall season with a mask. And I have coached um, over this last year as well with athletes in masks. It can be done. Uh, we can't control what other jurisdictions do, but I don't think we should bring down our standards to theirs, uh, particularly over this next month. Um, and so we will revisit this and I know this is economically challenging as it has been for virtually every industry, especially our hospitality industry here in Montgomery County. And we will work with our organizations as we have done in the past. In fact, this council stood up funds and resources specifically to help youth, youth sports organizations. Uh, and, and I think you know, that's something we'll revisit, especially as we have received another round of federal funding. We understand the economic challenges and we wanna keep you all thriving and vibrant. We know this is immensely challenging, particularly now, um, but we will work with you and we will uh, be as nimble as we were in the development of the policy that we're about to vote on today. So thank you all. I know this has been incredibly uh, frustrating, uh, it has been for us too, but we are working towards progress. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Friedson. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. President. Just want to, first of all, echo the appreciation by Council Member Rice to the young people in particular who uh, shared their feedback, and not just the ones who joined us today, but the ones who have been voicing uh, their uh, viewpoints uh, and following what we do here uh, over the course of the last week and beyond. Uh, I, I uh, hope that continues because your engagement is so necessary and I hope you can see today and beyond that your engagement matters and uh, it makes a meaningful difference and uh, really is the reason why we're here right now. So I just wanted to thank you for that. And uh, like other uh, colleagues, uh, high school sports and competitive sports growing up were such an important part of my up. Uh, uh, bringing and uh, such an important part of me growing up in Montgomery County. And uh, so I think we all recognize how important it is for our young people to have this outlet. And uh, it helped to, for me to hold myself accountable. It, it uh, helped to hold each other accountable. And I also appreciate, uh, as others have noted, the focus on safety and on making sure that this is done uh, responsibly that uh, young people uh, who are participating in youth sports are going to hold themselves and each other accountable. I uh, really think this has been a collaborative effort. It's going to continue to need to be uh, a collaborative effort. We're all going to have to continue to work together to keep uh, each other safe, to make sure that we can continue uh, to allow for activities uh, to happen. But uh, I think young people uh, do need uh, outlets, particularly at this time, perhaps more than ever. Uh, this certainly is an opportunity to be able to do that and uh, really appreciate the fact that uh, council colleagues, MCPS, public health, uh, and uh, all of the relevant stakeholders uh, in the community, especially young people, have been able to 
work together to get to a, a good result here. So uh, thank you to uh, Council Members Rice and Reamer for putting this forward. Uh, thanks to all colleagues and uh, looking forward to uh, our young people being able to return to play in a safe way and for us to be able to move forward out of this uh, dark period to a, a better point in time. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Nevado. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, Council Member Reamer and Rice uh, and all my colleagues for uh, quickly coming back to address this particular issue. Also, I wanna thank our residents, our families and our young people, because this has been very, very difficult, but everybody has stepped up. I mean, I don't think there's a place that I have gone to in the county where people are, you know, not wearing their mask. Everybody's wearing their mask. Everybody is being diligent. And that has been important. This is why we have been able to monitor carefully and see how the cases have been able to go down. At the same time, I want to reiterate that we are also monitoring variants. Uh, and it is important to recognize that, that we are one of the two states that has seen all three variants. And today we heard that there's an additional one. Um, so as we are you know, hopeful because of the increase in, in the availability of vaccines. Uh, we're also monitoring this issue of the variants as we're trying to balance how to begin to reopen and how do we be begin to bring some normalcy, especially to our young people and our children. Uh, so I just wanted to share that to let you know that it is not lost on me particularly, but I know in all my colleagues that this is all an exercise in balancing. Um, but most of all, it's an exercise in making sure that we safeguard the health, and the safety of our residents. Um, and I'm glad that we are able to take this step forward by consulting with MCPS and our health professionals uh, that we're able to do this. And, and hopefully, if we all continue to stay the course, uh, very soon we'll be able to open more things up, to go get back to normal. Um, and to really celebrate the fact that all of us held together, um, came together to, um, to really beat this horrible, horrible virus. Uh, so one more step forward, we will continue to monitor as it was um, shared by my colleagues. Please be mindful of that. Our young people, you're so awesome. The ones that came to talk to us, the ones that have written, et cetera, you're amazing. You have demonstrated that you have what it takes to be resilient. You have to continue to do that as we're trying to um, move forward in this space uh, because we wouldn't want to go back um, in any possible way. So again, thanks to my colleagues and I'm really, um, I'm thrilled to be able to, to support this um, particular proposal as well. Thank you, Council Member Glass. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. You know, this has been a, a, a tough year and we know that our youth have lost so much. You know, they've lost in classroom learning. Uh, they've lost their ability, some of them, to to play organized sports, and some of them, most tragically, have lost family members. And so we we know the loss is real and it is profound on various levels. And last week, we as a council said that we'd revisit this issue of youth sports, and here we are. Uh, and so I want to thank council members Rice and Reamer. Uh, for working on this and, and all of my colleagues for the collaborative dialogue to help get us where we are now. And we're going to continue coming back to this uh, and aspects of the health order and amend it as necessary based on the data and the guidance of our medical professionals. Um, you know, I, I view this as a, a living document and it will continue to evolve as the situation on the ground uh, and in the region uh, dictates. And, you know, I'll just say that growing up, I, I, I played soccer and ran track and certainly understand the, the physical and mental benefits of playing sport and athletics. And as we keep moving forward with a phased in approach to reopening, uh, we're gonna have to continue working through these issues and, and determine the best way to, to safely move forward. Uh, and the advocacy that and education that we've heard, uh, particularly from our students, um, good job. Um, and please don't go away. Uh, I hope to see you back here on the Zoom or in person uh, when that time comes so that you stay engaged uh, and continue sharing your voice and advocating for, for Montgomery County as, as you see it. And so uh, I'm pleased we're at this point. We'll continue coming back as necessary to work on our health orders. 
Uh, but, but for now, I will be supporting this and look forward to continued dialogue. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Katz. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And I too would like to thank all of the young people uh, who spoke today, and for and for those who wrote, who uh, sent an email, and some I hadn't heard from them in many many months, and some uh, I had heard from fairly regularly, to uh, to let us know how very important this is. And I especially want to thank uh, Council Members Rice and Reamer for for working on this issue with all of us. And we have had some very good open, fruitful conversations among ourselves and among the, uh, the the public in general. But, you know, I also want to thank the coaches who, um, who many of whom reached out, but I want to thank them for what they do, because a lot of times this gets lost. This isn't an issue just about today. A, a coach is someone that saves lives, uh, regardless of the sport. And a coach is someone who was a mentor, a coach is someone who takes their time uh, to make certain that a young person, in many cases, uh, uh, in some cases, I guess it's a, uh, an older person if they're in college or a professional, but especially a young person, that they get to a better place in life. And we need to be thanking our coaches each and every day, not just on this issue, but on many others. And I think it should be noted that um, we need to be thanking our public health officials as well. They have constantly reminded us and will constantly remind us of the concerns with what we are doing today. And, but we know that they are going to work with us, with the community, continue to work with us, the community and everyone associated with it because we want the very best outcome for this that it can possibly have. One of the young people mentioned about scholarships, and that's certainly been something that has changed a lot of people's lives over the years. This is a ticket to, to go to college to get a better life. And please, please remember, and, and Vice President Auburn, I said it last, I guess it was this week, <laughs> in the week, the day he's run together. But he said how important it was that someone off of the field be careful what they're doing. It's not just what's on the field. You can't have um, uh, put yourselves in a position where you might be bringing uh, uh, COVID to the team because you went and did something off of the field. We need to make certain that everybody does it the right way, on and off the field, not just for this event, but for a lot of events. So please be safe, be well, and be careful. Thank you very much. Well said, Council Member. Um, I think everybody has spoken. Let me just add my thanks to all those who contacted us as well, um, and to Council Members Rice and Reamer uh, for all their work on this. As um, as we keep saying, we're making policy on the best advice of our health professionals, but we're doing it in real time during a, dur during in, in in the middle of an environment that changes by the hour. And among the bad news that makes this difficult is that there's been no manual for what we're doing, but the good news is there's still a very active democracy and engaged public in Montgomery County, and they're still engaged in responsive elected officials. And in this case, as is so often the case here, the public reached out and advised us along with our professional staff, including our health officials, and here we are responding. So I just wanted to add how proud I am of this council and how we continue to uh, respond to the changing environment of this pandemic. Let me uh, now call a uh, roll call vote on the resolution titled Resolution to Adopt a First Amendment Board of Health Regulation to Prevent the Spread of COVID-19 in Montgomery County. Mr. Uh, President, if, yes, if I could just, just very, very quickly, right. I apologize, yes. just, just very quickly. I really wanted to thank my Chief of Staff, uh, Sharon Ledner, for all the great work, the tireless effort she's put into coordinating with all of your offices and all of your chiefs of staff. So I also wanna thank all of them. They did a yeoman's job in getting this together in just a week. And also thank Mr. Drummer for his great work and dedication as well. So just wanted to make sure that was out there. Thank you. Welcome interruption. Uh, thank you, Ms. Ledner and Mr. Drummer. Okay, uh, Madam Clerk, can you take a roll call vote on the resolution, please? Mr. Glass? Yes. Mr. Glass votes yes. Mr. Jawando? Yes. Mr. Jawando votes yes. Mr. Reamer? Yes. Mr. Reamer votes yes. Ms. Navarro? Yes. Ms. Navarro votes yes. Mr. Rice? Yes. Mr. Rice votes yes. Mr. Friedson? Yes. Mr. Friedson votes yes. Mr. Katz? Yes. Mr. Katz votes yes. Mr. Abenos? Yes. 
Mr. Abernoff votes yes. And Mr. Hucker? Yes. Mr. Hucker votes yes. Resolution passes. Congratulations, everyone. Thanks to everybody who participated. Thanks for all your hard work. I think with that, we stand adjourned. Good. Take care, everybody. Have a great weekend. Have a great weekend. Thanks.